I want to wish a happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are with us this morning. Glad that we have visitors. We want to pray for those of our, our membership that are traveling. We want to be sure and, and pray that they have a safe journey to their destination and back to us. Glad to be here assembled together with the people of God to worship Almighty God and to study His Word. We need to remember next week, June 24th through the 27th, will be our family Bible school. By tonight, we will have some handouts that will be made available for anyone who would like to invite friends or co-workers or uh, fellow uh, neighbors. That way we can uh, help spread the gospel in our community. And um, the Family Bible School is for everyone. It's not just for the children, it's for the adults as well. We're going to have some guest speakers come in to teach our auditorium classes during that week, so it's going to be something that's going to be very profitable for all of us. We are creatures of habit. We do things in certain ways, at certain times, in a certain manner, from time to time, to the point that we can fall into a rut. Have you ever been in a rut in which you find yourself in a certain habit, doing the certain thing, in a certain way, at a certain time, and as a result of being fixed in that mode, you find that you're not getting at anything out of the situation or the thing you're trying to accomplish. We can get that way spiritually. I want to talk about overcoming a spiritual rut. This morning, we as Christians can find ourselves in a spiritual rut. If we're not careful, even preachers from time to time find themselves in a spiritual rut. Now, a rut is defined as a fixed or established mode of procedure or course of life, usually dull and unpromising. A rut. We understand what it is to be in a rut. Maybe perhaps we're in a dead-end job, perhaps in a dead-end friendship, perhaps we're in a dead-end situation where we find ourselves in a rut. And spiritually, we can find ourselves in a rut, and that can lead to apostasy or falling away if we're not careful. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, Paul the Apostle as he's writing to the churches of Christ at Galatia, he says this, Galatians 6, 7 through 9, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. That's a rut. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Being stuck in a spiritual rut can cause us to lose heart. We can grow weary with the Christian life and with Christian service, and we can lose heart and fall away if we're not careful. So we need to keep the fire kindled, so to speak. We need to keep the zeal zealous in our Christian service as individual Christians and as a congregation. This morning, let me give you four ways that we can overcome a spiritual rut. Perhaps there's someone here this morning, you find yourself in this type of situation. You're in a spiritual rut. First of all, you can get out of a spiritual rut through Bible study. Bible study. And that means we study the Scriptures on our own, not just on Sunday morning assembly, but every day we should be taking time with the Word of God to feed our spirit. We understand the importance of studying God's Word. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Paul says, Be diligent or study to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Other translations say be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Be diligent means to study. 
That means we read and we study. Not only read, but we study. Giving diligence, we put effort into it so that we might be approved of God, a worker that is not ashamed because we're handling correctly the word of truth. God's word can be mishandled, and oftentimes it is. We need to study so that we might be able to handle correctly God's word. We need to be like the Bereans of Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. Paul, or excuse me, Luke by inspiration said these, talking about the Bereans, were more noble or fair-minded than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things are so. They searched the scriptures daily. They were diligent in their Bible study and they searched the scriptures. They just didn't take man's word for it. They searched the scriptures and they did it Daily, not weekly, as in once a week, but daily to see whether these things are so. Second Peter chapter three, verses sixteen through eighteen, we are told by the apostle Peter that untaught and unstable people twist the scriptures to their own destruction. And in verse seventeen he says, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware or be warned lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. There are people out there twisting the word of God and can lead us away if we're not careful. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. We grow in the knowledge of God's Word. And as we are growing and understanding more, we understand the truth. We desire the truth. We hunger for the truth. We want to live the truth and obey the truth. And we recognize error when it's being taught and when it's being practiced. Now, how can we get out of the rut of mundane, dull, unpromising Bible study? Well, first of all, one way we can do that is to study from a different translation than we're used to. Perhaps you're used to studying out of the King James Version. I would suggest go to the New King James Version. Study a book or study a passage not only in the King James, but in the New King James. I, most often than not, preach and teach out of the New King James Version. It's a very accurate, very up-to-date translation of the Word of God. But if you have the New King James Version and you want something a little different to see a different wording or how words or phrases are differently translated, uh, go to the New American Standard Version. Again, another reliable translation. There has been recently a new version that's come out just within this century, the English Standard Version. ESV it is called. English Standard Version. It is a good translation of the Word of God. And so if you're used to the New King James or the New American Standard or the King James Version, you can go to the English Standard Version and read and study a book or a passage of Scripture from that version. And that will bring out nuances of the Word of God that perhaps we have not looked at before. We can also get out of this spiritual rut through the Bible study by studying a new book of the Bible. Perhaps there are books of the Bible that we have just neglected in our Bible study. Perhaps in the Old Testament, uh, there is a book that you've never spent any time in. How many of us have read Song of Solomon lately? It's a very neglected book. Take time to read that book. It talks about the intimacy between a husband and wife. It's very beautiful. Uh, when was the last time we spent any time in the Proverbs or read Obadiah or Zechariah? Take time to study those books. Again, if you study it out of one translation, study it out of another translation as well. And that way you can bring out and enhance your Bible study. You can study a new book of the Bible that perhaps you have not studied before. There are 66 books to choose from. And so we can study a new book of the Bible that we have perhaps neglected in the past. Or do a word study. You can do a word study on the word love. See how the word love is used in the Old Testament. 
how it is used in the New Testament, the different Hebrew words for love, the different Greek words for love. And you can study these things, use tools of uh, Hebrew and Greek study. You don't have to be a scholar to understand these things. I can understand it. And if I can, anyone can. These are tools that are available to anyone to, to study these things. Study the word love. Study God. Study perhaps uh, the Holy Spirit. Or study faith. Study a subject that you have been wanting to know more about and do a subject study in the Word of God. And by doing that, we can enhance our Bible study. Secondly, we can get out of a spiritual rut through fervent prayer. I didn't just say prayer. Fervent prayer. In Bible study, God is speaking to us. In prayer, we are communicating with God. And Paul emphasizes the importance of prayer in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Paul says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, Verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So we are to pray, make these prayers, intercessions, supplications, giving of thanks for everyone, for those who are in authority, praying for our president. It doesn't mean you exactly agree with everything he does. You may not have even voted for him. It doesn't matter. We're to pray for those who are in authority. Pray for him. Pray for our government. Pray for those soldiers that are overseas. Pray that this war will come to an end soon. Pray that the, the things that are going on over in the Middle East may be a door of opportunity to open for the gospel to be spread in that area of the world that badly needs it. Pray to God with the attitude of reverence and godliness, realizing that God desires all men to be saved. Perhaps you have a family member or family members that are not Christians or perhaps they're unfaithful Christians. Are we praying that they repent? Praying that they repent and come back to the truth or praying that they will repent and be converted and become Christians according to the New Testament teaching? We need to be people of prayer. Psalm 28, verse 6 and 7. Blessed be the God because He has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise Him. Praising and exalting God for the wonderful things that He has done. And He says, I am doing this because He has heard my supplication. <clears throat> we are praying to God and we are asking of Him things that He will do in our, on our behalf. James chapter 5 and verse 16, that's why it is called fervent prayer. James 5 and verse 16, James says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent Prayer of a righteous man avails much. That word fervent there is the Greek word energio. We get the word energy from it. Fervent prayer, energetic prayer, in which we're praying and we're praying to God and we're praying to Him in a way that we are having a conversation with the Almighty with reverence and godliness. But we're talking to him because we believe that he's listening to us. Now, sometimes, even in our pub public prayers, when men pray, and I fall into this category as well, you can almost predict word for word what the person's going to pray when they get up before the church and pray. They have their characteristic things that they say, and that can be a rut as well in which we say the same phraseology over and over and over again in our prayers, but we need to try to get out of that rut and pray in a way 
that we are using language, of course, that's scriptural, that's in harmony with God's word, but we realize we're having a conversation with Almighty God. Not just falling back on old phraseology that we've said over and over again. That's a rut. We need to talk to someone, uh, uh, talk to God as we are talking to someone, realizing we're not talking to our equal, but we are having a conversation with someone that we love very, very dearly. Prayer. Here's some ways that we can enhance our prayer life. Start a prayer journal. Start a prayer journal. Write down your prayers. You can write down in your prayer journals your fears, your joys, your shortcomings, your sins, your victories, and your goals. Write those down. And that's something that you can keep in your personal prayer life. And pray at specific times a day. Remember, Daniel, he prayed three times a day. He had a specific time of day that he prayed. Perhaps when it's lunchtime. At your job or at your work, you take time to, to eat, you take time maybe to study a portion of God's Word, and you take time to pray. That's a time that we can pray. We make time for what is important to us, and prayer should be important to us. And as I said earlier, try to break with traditional wording in prayer. Pray from the heart, not just falling back on old phraseology that we have said over and over and over again. You know, Jesus talked about vain repetition, saying the same thing over and over and over again because we just don't know what else to say. We should be pouring out our heart to God fervently and saying what is on our heart that we feel that's in harmony with God's Word. Thirdly, we can get out of a spiritual rut through involvement in evangelism. Spreading the gospel. Every Christian here has a responsibility to spread the gospel. We do that, of course, by our example. We're living the Christian life. We're showing the world this is how a Christian is. This is how a redeemed, saved individual acts and reacts in a wicked world. We're letting our light shine before the world that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. But we need to be active in soul winning. Pro Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. We need to be soul winning for Jesus Christ. We need to be looking for those doors of opportunity to teach. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 3. Meanwhile, Paul says, praying for us, that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. God will open doors. That goes back to our prayers. Are we praying for doors to be opened so that we might teach the word of God to others? God has entrusted his Christians with this treasure, the treasure of the gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God's word, this treasure of the gospel, is found in earthen vessels, and that's us. We should be sharing this treasure with other people. We can do this in various ways, and we, we have various tools that we can use to, to do that. There are excellent tracks like this one, You Can't Get to Heaven Alone that we can hand out to people, that we can, as we go to the doctor's office, leave that there with the magazines. We go and we uh, might see someone and we hand it, just hand it to them and say, here's some good material to read. It's as simple as that. We're spreading the gospel. Or perhaps this card, Searching for Truth, free DVD. Sometimes we have uh, this opportunity to, to spread this by putting this in a bill. We all have to pay bills, water bill, gas bill. And we put this in there and someone might see this and go to our website. Call us. Already have one person contact us as a result of this card requesting the DVD. So we have opportunities. We have tools available. and We need to avail ourselves of these tools to spread the gospel throughout the world, planting this seed. Not everyone will respond positively in a sense of being converted but we are planting the seed, it might take a time. It might take years for that seed to grow. Hopefully it will. Also, we do the spreading of the gospel 
in, 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 in evangelism by inviting people to worship service, to family Bible schools, to gospel meetings, inviting them to come to see what New Testament Christianity is all about. I was talking just the other day to the preacher at the um, Rollett Church of Christ. Uh, Michael Wilk is his name. And I did I don't know him very well, so I was getting to know him. I was asking how he was converted. And he has a denominational background and said that he had been searching for the truth. He had been studying the Word of God. And he was converted because someone knocked on his house and invited his family to vacation Bible school. Now he and his family are Christians. And now he is a gospel preacher as a result of that invitation. We never know the potential of the person that we're inviting. We never know unless we try. We need to also learn the Bible so we can conduct a personal Bible study. We need to learn it so that we can show them why baptism is necessary for salvation. Why you are to have faith in God and believe in Him. Why the church is organized, worshipped, conducts the work that it conducts. What we are involved in. And that takes that goes back to uh, Bible study. That takes us taking time to study the Word of God. We need to be busy evangelizing. And number four, finally, we can get out of a spiritual rut by taking advantage of opportunities to edify. The word edify means to encourage. We need encouragement as Christians. So oftentimes we might have relatives. We might have family members. We might have a spouse. We might have neighbors and co-workers that are not spiritual and they just don't care about Christ and the Bible. And so we need to be encouraged by our brothers and sisters, edified, Built up. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, the Hebrews writer talks about that. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any one of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Today, every single day, we should take time to encourage one another, to edify one another, to build one another up. We do that by assembling together. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Again, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. We will assemble together tonight at 6 o'clock. That's another opportunity for us to edify, to build up, to encourage one another. We assemble again midweek at 7.30 on Wednesday night. Another opportunity for us to assemble together and to edify and to build one another up. But during the week, we can do just little things. Little things mean a lot in edifying and building one another up. Sending a card or a letter to someone to encourage them. Just to let them know you appreciate them. Not for any special occasion, just you're thinking about them. And you appreciate them. I can't tell you how many times I've received cards or emails or letters or gifts from people just because they're thinking about me. And that's encouraging to me. That builds me up. We can encourage one another by those simple things. Words of encouragement. We can speak a word of encouragement to someone. When was the last time you said to someone, I appreciate you? Not because they did something for you. Just go up and say, I appreciate you being a faithful Christian. You're a great example. Encouraging one another in these words. And we can determine to assemble together with the church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. By doing that, we are edifying one another as a congregation, building one another up, and we are building ourselves up as Christians. We can overcome our spiritual rut. Don't let the devil take advantage of a spiritual rut. 
we can be faithful to the Lord and we can keep that fire kindled and that fire stoked in our life. We can overcome any rut that we find by doing these things. Perhaps there's someone here this morning who's not a Christian. We urge you to believe and obey the gospel. Confess your faith in Christ. Repent of all your sins and be immersed, baptized into Christ in water for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll be baptized into the body of Christ, the church. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. If you've done that, perhaps you're in a rut we urge you to recognize these things and grow. Perhaps you're in sin. Repent and come back to the Lord. As always, the choice is yours. While together we stand and we sing.